Good evening. My colleague, Minister Hamilton, is a gentleman, as always, and so he's letting the ladies speak first. So I want to thank all of our viewers, especially on social media, on the Vice President, Honorable Barrett Jaglio's page, as well as my ministerial page, the People's Progressive Party page, and all those who are sharing, as well as the on television, those who are viewing, thank you for tuning in here tonight on the Thursday agenda. Well, good night again, and uh, myself and Sonia, we are asked to bat here, um, and I know we will bat very well. Uh, we just wanted to talk to you, viewers and listeners, uh, about what has been transpiring since uh, Monday the 17th, when we presented our list and what has been happening so far at the level of the People's Progressive Party Civic and what is happening or not happening as regards the APNO waves, APNO PNC. So we just want to clarify some issues and to bring the facts to people so that they will have a clear understanding as to what is happening and they will not be taken in by the propaganda and the lies coming out of the leader of the opposition and the people, People's National Congress. Uh, and first off, I, I want to, to speak to a comment Norton made or an answer to a question about PNC contesting, at no contesting. And he said, um, this quote, when they asked about um, the tongues they're contesting, he said they're contesting in virtually all the towns. And so, you know, YC might be, YC is wrong, he might be right. Because in the case of, in the case of letter, uh, they will have to do it via the means of virtual communication. Because that tongue, uh, that tongue will exhibit the state of the PNC up to the moment. The background is David Granger established a tongue township in letter. 2016 first elections, the APNU won uh, the, the town and they had the mayor and deputy mayor and they controlled the town. Uh, fast forward to 2018 elections, we won that town narrowly and so coming into these elections, we have the um, majority of um, councillors in the town. Well, here you have a party, major political party, they will boast that they're 60 odd years old. So they are moving from a stronghold, let them, even in the national elections, uh, when we normally would win the region, they were always uh, had more votes and winning let them, and that is the historical um, perspective of matter. So they're moving from controlling a town so even cannot name candidates to contest. They have not presented a list uh, in that town to, um, to contest. And I know as we go along, you would point out, and I would attempt, uh, also, what is the state? Uh, um, so he lied by saying they're virtually contesting in every town. Uh, when, when that is not so, and I'm starting to let them to make the point, some of the towns that they are contesting in, there are still contestations because there are uh, allegations and facts that have come to us now. It has moved beyond allegation because we have evidence coming forward now of where they forge signatures of persons to put them on their list. It's not that they forge signatures only of backers like they have done, <laughs> but they have forged signatures of candidates, people who have no knowledge that they were presented on a list to the um, Guyan Elections Commission as a candidate for the APNU um, uh, list of candidates. So, so that is the, the state. And so when Norton con come to you in your villages and your towns, they will continue to lie. But the facts, um, they cannot be died. These are the facts. Uh, they can 
what will they say um, later? The fact, the, the fact is that they did not submit a list of candidates there. They're not even contesting. Right. So for all in, everything that is happened already, the town is won by the People's Progressive Party, civic, even before we started the campaign. Right, so, right, so to add to what you said, Joe, uh, I mean, Norton, on the few occasions that you saw, it, saw him giving some sort of uh, some information via the television at some point before leading up to nominations day to the few people that would listen to him. He was saying, look, we would do anything to keep our strongholds. We're coming out, we're contesting these elections. Even the morning before, on, on nominations day, he held a, uh, he had an event live and he said he's going to come out and contest. Now, that's the first deception. But you know, it doesn't surprise me, Joe, because this party has had a track record of rigging elections. So it doesn't surprise me that they would go at any length to, to seem as if they have votes. And to try to steal, they, say, they tried to steal an entire country not so long ago in the general elections. Nothing would prevent them from trying something else now. And, you know, out of the 610 constituencies that are up for local government election, only about 327 they are contesting along with other parties, along with other groups. You know, so that would be. Out of that, 283 of those constituencies are not contested by them. So when he said earlier today, we are contesting all the parties, you know, he's puffing up his chest and he's saying to Guyana or whoever's listening to him, we are contesting all. It's his deceptive nature's coming out there again. You know, and that is all I see when I see this party and the members of this party. Deception. Deception. And so right away you have let them you spoke about, you have Arnaputa, and that, that, is a, that is a constituency that they would have previously won. And they didn't even contest that. And several more across the country that they did not contest. Two, as a matter of fact, 283. So already the PPPC would have won the 283. And then we are going for more. But you know, looking at nominations day, and the wave of red that you saw, I am most certain, I am most certain it put them in a state of frenzy. It put them in a state of frenzy that an embarrassment and shame that they would go at any length to say that the PPP is doing this to get votes and the PPP is doing that to get votes. But no, people want development in this country. People want development. They are tired of being pushed and pulled and nothing was done for them between 2015 and 2020. They recognize that this government, this Irfan Ali-led government, is working for their benefit, is working for the country at large, and we want development. And that is why you saw numbers on nomination day. That is why you saw numbers. So now they're coming, he's coming to say, look, you think you have us? No, 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 no. We have this, we contested all, but you know, it's all lies. It's all lies. And then you had persons who identified themselves on social media to say, look, I have seen these lists in places. You know, I am named as a candidate and I did not sign on to that list. I am, I, my name is there as a backer, but I did not put my signature to your list. That is the APNU or PNC list. These are people who identify for themselves, not the party identifying them. So, you know, so, you know, the deception and the shame and the embarrassment, I believe that they would act up in any way. And they will say things to their own, who they believe that their supporters are. They would say things to them to make, to mislead them. Misinformation, misrepresentation deception you know so because that's the only way they know how to, to to win something the thing is i spoke to let them but you know i was in madhya again and another stronghold supposedly of um and leading off from the point that you made it. He, he said that he will do everything possible to contest in the stronghold to ensure that the people don't win those strongholds no. now those are not words consistently but i Led the 
nomination delegation in Madhya. That's another stronghold. Yes. And it was painted red that day as <laughs> regards... I know. I, I saw it. I saw it. As regards people um, coming out. Yes. And what was important, Tonya, a cross-section of people, young people. Yes. Well, I'm the uh, head of the list and the deputy are uh, two young people. And when you saw what happened in, in, in um, and that, as I understand it, the list that they submitted in Madhya is filled with a lot of discrepancies and all that kind of thing. I so the sure. likelihood, I am sure, when G come down to the um, vetting, they might not have a list. <laughs> in, in, in my, yeah. well, another another struggle. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, I think when Norton probably saw Linden, Linden on nominations, the Mocha in nomination, because you know he showed up in Mocha, he showed up in Mocha, right? And and Bella Drum in Region Five. Those are places that I am most certain almost brought him to his knees if it didn't bring him to his knees. Because people genuinely want to follow development. People don't want deception. They don't want to be fed lies by that party anymore. And that is the reason why, you know, uh, Monday, when they saw what was happening, they went to this mo into the mode of disparaging people of African descent, yes. afro Ghanaians. Yes. Uh, they had this field day of cussing every person of African descent who are supporting the PVP. Yeah. More so, uh, those who once supported the PNC, right. who today, as you have indicated, uh, they want nothing to do with the PNC. And uh, you have people who serve as counselors in Georgetown who testify right. uh, why they made it, 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 this change. And, and you have uh, alluded to the fact that people want progress and development. People want better life for their children that's and right. themselves. That, that's the fundamental, and if you put us side by side, um, for people who are like me, I have an easy job now when I'm talking to young people. I don't have to take them back to 70s and 80s. They had an experience with that. Right. So it is close to their heart that they could make the comparison. That is what is playing out here, you know. Right. Uh, that they were able to, they are able to make that comparison. Look, we have five years of these people, and look in three years, what has happened on the Air Force and led uh, PPC government. And so, for the people of African descent, you have to be prepared for more of this um, crass, vulgar, a language because that is the only thing they know but I know that you are strong enough to withstand that this will pass as I have said this the same day question this will pass uh, for us people like me who crossed that bridge years ago and others by the hundreds by the thousand we will be there to support you the party will be there to support you. the leadership of the party will be there to support so these spears and arrows, I know that will come and the bad friendship and bad blood. And so I would say this, what we have to be prepared for is that as much as we see how desperate they are in the last couple of days, they will become more desperate as election time comes. Because closer to elections, when election day, they know that that is a real writing on the wall when the ballots will be counted and when the local government, local authority area will be declared yes. um, what um, the, the, the results will be. Already, as you have indicated, they have failed to contest in 55% of, of the constituencies. Correct, 20, that, 24 LA, LA, yeah. AAs they contest. 24 local authority area out of the 80 that exist. So already, uh, people who support these people, you see what is the state of, of the um, People's National Congress, um, APNU, whatever they call themselves. And so why would people want to continue to support a failed party, yeah. failed leadership? And, you know, before you jump in, even if member of parliaments that Norton 
he has in the parliament, they did not go to support him, except for Don Hastings. Not another member of parliament went out there to support Norton, to present this, like, and people have made the point that yeah. all our ministers, all our MP, yeah. we were out there in every region across this country. So if the man, member of parliament, they don't have confidence in him, why do you think the ordinary citizen will have confidence in him to vote for his party? Yes. Uh, so that, that is the state. Of, 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 and so we, we expect more lies. We expect more pro propaganda that will come out of Norton and the People's National yes. Congress. But you know, Joe, you made a very important point that the party is failing. And this is evident from nominations day alone, much as when the elections come. Because look, for since I can remember, the PPPC and the PNC were the two main political parties. But as far as I'm concerned, the PPP is the main political party because this party has been showing signs, cracks from a w long time ago, but those cracks have widened now and it's a demise. It's a complete demise and we've, saw, we've seen that. It, it's horrible for the party. It's, it's gone, gone down, really. But I want to, I want to raise another another issue that I feel compelled to raise. You know, just after nominations day had closed, uh, GCOM's office closed and so on, as you know, the list is posted and so for everyone to see, whether it be the opposition list or the government or the PPPC's list of persons. And you have time to go through that list or, or, or you know, you have reasonable time to go through that list and identify if there are any issues or objections and you have a time period which has come to an end. But with our party's list and our candidates' lists and backers' lists, quickly issues were identified and identified by the people themselves. The people themselves, not the candidate, not, not the party leadership. It was identified by those people who who they claim put a signature there and did not. But guess what happened? After it was brought to light by the PPPC to the public and put in the public domain for, for everyone to see, for everyone to see how deceptive they are and the length that they would go. They went scrambling to try to see what they could find at the 12th hour to come and say, this is what you have done. You have committed fraud. Absolutely not. In Region 5 today, they claim a number of persons uh, that the candidates for Union Nargisite and uh, I believe it was one other NDC, that they, that people, as a matter of fact, a generic letter went wrong, right? And signatures were on those. I, at this point in time, I'm sitting here, I can't see if it's those people's signatures or not. But what I do know, the generic letter would indicate that one person prepared them and passed them around, right? That didn't happen when we brought to light what was taking place in our areas with our lists or our candidates' lists. Generic letters signed. But you know what we learned? They were scrambling today to intimidate and force people who legitimately put their signature as backers on some of our candidate, candidates' lists. To sign to say they did not. And you know why I would believe that? Because it's Carol Joseph, the former petroleum advisor to the Granger government. Vince Roy Jordan, an MP who has had a, a history particularly with me, with being bullish, with being or trying to be intimidating. And you know I had that issue in Belladrum at some point uh, last year when he was trying to intimidate and bully me and as a matter of fact that played out on nominations day at the Woodley Park NBC because you know what you have to be first or second in line the PPPC was the first in line to go submit their list but they didn't want to accept that they did not want to accept that so what they did was to put their few supporters who they brought out there to block the doors. I was there. I was there. To block the doors so the PPPC's uh, candidates and leader and deputy leader for that list could not go to submit the list. 
So of course you had to have the law be followed. So that was put in place. Now when I stood up outside there, Vince Roy Jordan, and I asked my operators to put up a video that I, that I took with my phone, to put, uh, that was taken with my phone, to put up a video to show this is how he was carrying on in front of the door, in front of the gate. Coming up to moments before, that is me standing here. Came up moments before with his hand in my face. Never mind that the police was there to intimidate me. To come and to come and try to tell me to get out of here. There is nothing that I can do. This is his stronghold. But he couldn't accept the fact that we had a candidate and we have a candidate in this area that we were first in line to submit you know could not so you know why i would believe that they intimidated these people because that is their behavior just yesterday carol joseph there was a an audio that was being played of her answering the starbrook news reporter and carrying on in the most vile the vilest of languages and then shutting down the phone. So perhaps, perhaps she was a bit embarrassed and she tried to cover it with something like this. But you know what? They are known for their bullyism. They are known for their deception. They are known for trying to rig elections. And so this is their <clears throat> behavior all the time. So I have no doubt that they went to people's homes and tried to force them to do this at the 12th hour. At the 12th hour. Why wasn't this done three days before? When the list was out. The important thing you know, so you know. is uh, this. Look, these PNC people have not <coughs> uh, woken to the fact that they cannot intimidate people. They're incapable of intimidating I mean, <laughs> we lived through uh, the five months. Yeah. And that was when they wanted to hold on to government. And we survived, all the people survived. So people pass through the attempt to intimidate, yes. the attempt to bully, the attempt to threaten. And what we saw play out is a Guyanese public, the young people, the professional people, whether people from the towns or city or interland, they stood together and faced down the People's National Congress in, in 2020. So that should be a lesson to them. Yes. Now listen, you can't intimidate no one. People will not allow you it to It will intimidate. not work. It will, it not, will work. not work. But they still yet are uh, unable to understand that. They still think that they can uh, attempt to bully people. They can attempt to intimidate people. And as I said earlier, as elections they uh, approaches, as we come closer, um, I expect them to do anything likely. But for me, I always make this point, you know, as a politician. I have gone into communities, uh, election time, and, you know, all the antics. And my position has always been, I came here as a pol to keep a political meeting. The security issues, the police had to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. my position always, of you know. Of course. Uh, you will not shut down this meeting. Of course. Right? And that is the... the, the as we go into communities, I know there will be these attempts, but we're, uh, uh, we know that the police is they're capable of dealing with, with these matters to keep the peace. We will campaign, we will go door to door and have conversations with people, we will go street to street, village to village, town to town, and engage persons because you know uh, that is how we dealt with that matter in 2019, 2020. Yeah. Places that um, uh, they didn't want to see PPP, today we can go into yes. those places yes. because we went there in good faith and we engaged people yes. and we put before them our programs, our plans, and they now can testify individually and collectively yes. that the plans and the programs we put before them uh, via our manifesto in 2020, they could see it. They're reaping benefits from it. Yes. And so, People, they cannot cause people anymore to distrust us because people, they have the evidence before them. Uh, and, and that is what will cause them to become more desperate uh, as we go along 
uh, right up to June to these elections. Yes, and you're, you're absolutely right, Joe. And you know, I, I also want to, to speak about their narrative. They feel that they have some sort of, and by they I mean the PNC, those members in the PNC, they feel they have some wig, wiggle room, or where they feel they have a wiggle room, they will push a narrative. So they keep pushing a narrative of racism. Because guess what? There is nothing else they can talk about. Not even that as a matter of fact. Because all of our programs and our policies from the time we got into government, and you know what, Joe? We will go house to house. But that's not starting now. We have been on the ground since we came into office in August 2020. We have continued to engage people on the ground because we cannot and should not make a program or policy without the consultation of the people. And that is why our programs are successful and our policies are successful because they are meaningful in a way that it benefits, it truly benefits the Guyanese and what Guyanese want. And it's inclusive. For example, the scholarship program. And you know, this is not just figures and this is not just names. These are real people. The scholarship program, the gold scholarship program, we have posted, we have published the names of those persons on social media and in newspapers, the, the awardees. And if you take a look at just that list, you will see that it reflects Guyanese. It reflects Indo-Guyanese, Afro-Guyanese. And at a large percentage, as a matter of fact, 40 something percent of, of Afro Guyanese were granted scholarships in 2022 under the Gold Scholarship. And you also have the Hintel and the Amerindians were also granted the mixed race, Chinese, you name it. It's, it's reflective of Guyana, and all our programs and policies are reflective. It's, it's not just by name or by number. The housing sector, sports, education. I mean, <laughs> education. How can you call that racist? You're taking care of all of the children in this, in this country. All of the children. You know. But what they should look back at is from 2015 to 2020 when they took away the cash grant. When in 2019 they gave no scholarships to the Hintel and Region 8, Region 7. None of those were given. As a matter of fact, the ministers were given scholarships, but the, but the people were not. You know. The money was redirected and prioritized for their use but not for the people. There was no inclusion there. And look, look, look at the candidates that are contesting for the township, for Georgetown. Do you see Guyana reflected in that? Do you see our six races reflected in that? And that's their it problem. Is not. It is not. Um, they, their problem is not. they want to paint us with their brush. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, when you look at our candidate list, it's reflective of Guyana and the Guyanese people. When you look at their candidate list, it's reflected one race, one one uh, race, one race. There is no inclusion. No inclusion. We seek to give equal opportunities to everyone in this country, and that is shown by the statistics. And we have held a track record like that. And we will continue to work for all Guyanese. But you know, they can't handle that. They can't handle the fact that Guyanese are getting on board with the progress and development. So they're going to take the narrative outside of Guyana for somebody else to try to buy into their silliness and their deception. But the thing is, though, you know, the, the, the race conversation. Uh, that they continue to peddle. Uh, people are into their game now, recognize that, you know, these guys who suggest that they care about me, when they were in government, they didn't care a damn about me. <laughs> these guys, I couldn't even find them. Yes. I didn't even know um, how to make contact with them. No one can say that about the ministers of the Irfan Ali Lev government. No one. We are accessible day and night to That's all it. and sundry. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's my, the difference. With my us. numbers up on Facebook. Yeah. Right? 
Uh, we all wake up in the morning and uh, WhatsApp and, 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 and uh, messages by the dozen, whether WhatsApp or whether Messenger. But, but the point is, we are accessible. Yeah. In office and out of office, on the road, and we are out there. And that is the difference. And if, you want, if they want to know what uh, is driving people to support the PVP, it's accessibility is one of the issues. Yeah. And benefits and service being listened to. Yeah. People want to be heard. They want to be heard and that's what we're doing. They never paid attention to people. For that matter, they never even paid attention to their own. Yeah. People were close to them. Uh, they, they just cast them aside. And many of them have testified to that fact. That these are people I couldn't get no access to them. Right. But today, as I've said, whether the president, the prime minister, the vice president, or any minister, people have access to them. For that matter, uh, the regular feature is engaging communities. Uh, two weeks ago, about 11 ministers at, at, at Victoria. Yes. Last week, yes. nine ministers. Yes. Uh, and then you have follow-up uh, happening. So, we are not shying away from people. And, and you know, Sonia, sometimes we go into communities and people are tough. They ask tough questions. They, they, they ask real questions. Real questions. Real questions. Right. And, real and, and, and you, can't, you, you can't spin around the bush. You have to give them real and proper answers that are satisfactory. Followed by action. And for, followed by action. And that is what um, people recognize. Persons who have different narratives about, about the PPP, who grew up in PNC homes. Today they're experiencing PPP uh, leadership. And many of them, and you, I'm, I'm sure, like all ministers, you have had people who testify, say, well, you know, I thought you were some different type of people. <laughs> yes, because people, people are shocked when, they, when you show up at their home yeah. or you're, they're walking on the corner of the road. But I mean, we are people too. We want to be able to hear. We don't want to rely on a third party. We never did. And you know, the government has worked and is working for the people. The president takes his office into the regions so that he can hear from the people one-on-one. -on -one. The vice president holds numerous outreaches, not to mention all of his press conferences where he briefs the public about what's going on. So, you know, we don't live a life of deception. We don't want to deceive. How, where is that going to get us? Where is that going to get us? Nowhere. So recognizing that there's a red wave, you have the likes of Carl Joseph, you have the likes of Vince Roy Jordan, and I'm told the pet lawyer has joined them also, yes. attempting to intimidate people in Region 5. Yes. Um, but it's not working, because people with their own judgment, utilizing the constitutional right they have yes. to associate and to support, yes. uh, they have made their decision, and they're not turning back from the from, from For the first time in history, we are contesting Moko all the constituency. For the first time in history, we are contesting the Namsil. We are contest contesting Belladrum. We are contesting Ithaca. And so it, all it, 610 of the constituency. And so it comes now to, okay, okay. It comes now to, no, 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 you can't take our people. Yeah. We have transport yeah. over this. Yeah, yeah, These yeah. people, we have transport and over this. The community, yeah, they, but the people don't want that. No. The people don't want they that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. They castigate, and then they demean because uh, Norton comments uh, to suggest that intelligent people of African descent can take ten thousand dollars to put on a red jersey. And like 5, take, take $25,000 to go on a list. The idiocy of this matter is here a person putting themselves on. And it is disrespectful yeah, to yeah, people yeah. who yeah. want to be right. a part of this development. It is disrespectful to afro Guyanese because those people have made and they have a right to make a choice of their own. And they are seeing, you know, Guyanese are smart people. They are seeing that this is real development and they want to come on board and then you have somebody in the corner saying I want your vote but at the same time I you are taking five thousand dollars to put on a t-shirt yeah such such um, insulting remarks childish petty right 
Because this is, a lead, this is somebody who is the leader. They cannot understand that, listen, they are failures and we are successful. There's a reason why yes. people have made the decision yes. Yes. Uh, in their interest and their own um, uh, family's interest. But so they have to try to cut them down yes. by using all kinds of slander and all kinds of names. You know, and now they come to people selling themselves for a pittance, as they said. But if you take it to the logical conclusion, Sonia, look, why would a man who live in certain community want to put out a red jersey if he's not committed to it, knowing what is likely to follow? Right. <laughs> why would a woman want to be on a list? But you still have areas <laughs> where people feel threatened yeah. to be in their yeah. area and to be sure. And this is exactly what's happening in some of the region five. So where they know that they can go and try to intimidate, that's what they did. That's what they did today at the 11th or 12th hour and then come out and say, oh, all these people here with this two line of generic letter that I wrote, that I wrote and gave to you, that's what you did. That, that's, that they, they, are, they didn't sign on to you. Well, the thing is, the thing is, as, as I've said earlier, look, people are wiser, they're smarter. People are making decisions on behalf of themselves and their children and their grandchildren. <coughs> and therefore they're making the best decision. What is the best decision? The best decision is the party that has the interests of the people of Guyana and want to ensure that all Guyana develop is the People's Progressive Party. So that, that, that is the, that is, you know, even our, even some people who don't like us, Sonia. Yes. <laughs> and you would have experienced that, like all of us. Uh, they have, you know, people say, you know, I, I really don't care too much. I don't like you. They say that, but uh, when I look at what you're all doing, you're all doing good work. Yes. <laughs> I have people yes. say that to me, but, you know, around the country, that listen, nobody can uh, take away from uh, the action, the activities, how engaged you all are, how proactive you all are, how you all resolve matters in people's interests, whichever type of matters. And that is what... Um, young people and other people, all people are paying attention to. Yeah, and we're not saying we're perfect, yeah. but we have to be. We we have to work with the people so that we will be able to deliver. We have to. And deliver, we are um, delivering. Yes. So Georgetown, the people in Georgetown, uh, a lot of y'all listening to me tonight. Look, some of you have already made this your decision. I would urge most, if not all, of you to make. That decision because if you look at it all the years since we became independent the PNC running the city yeah. is it better after all of those decades the answer to that question is no and I say this to Afro Guyanese look you must not and cannot insult yourself that the only reason you would follow a man or a woman is because they belong to the same ethnic group like you. Yes. That, that is really insulting yourself. Yeah. Uh, to, to not a program, not a plan, not how I can make life better for you. It's because me and you, four parents, come out of the same slave ship. You know, I have to support you and I have to vote, vote for you. And that is how the PNCC uh, black people, you know. Yes. They see them as okay um, because we look the same. You belong. They, to you me. belong to me, you know, and, and that is the reason why they are unable to live with the fact that people are not um, cowed and people are not intimidated. Uh, people are making decisions. People are saying, you know, leadership, Sonia. Then that has it. Don't have to do with whether you're. Indo Guyanese, Afro Guyanese, Amerindian, poor. leadership is leadership. And leadership is judging leadership based on actions and yes. what is happening. I can't judge your leadership that you will be a good leader because you look like me. Mm -hmm. And that is what the PNC um, forever want um, yes. Afro Guyanese to say, okay, I will vote for um, Arby Norton. Total waste, but. Because he's a, he's an Afro guy, I, I must vote for him. I will vote for him. Why would I want to vote for a waste? Yes. 
has done nothing. Has not done, there is nothing or be nothing. As leader of the opposition can point to that he has been successful. In. But even 2015 to 2020, the communities that they're claiming are their strongholds, they didn't do anything for these communities. They didn't do anything for the people who were vulnerable. You know, now we can all, and always, the numbers don't lie. We have statistics to show, you know, the communities that we have been in, what programs and policies were out there. There were no programs and policies. There was no vision for this country whatsoever, and there will be none if... They were still in government. They were still in government. My God, so near... The whole co country would have plummeted. The country, it was. people listening tonight, you all ever think about it. Reflect when we finish here in your quiet moments. Let us assume, God forbid, that Granger, they were able to pull off our elections. Three years from 20, what this place would have been? I, I, you know, it's a, it's, I it's can't a imagine it, I don't want to imagine it. <laughs> you know, I well, people should, it, it, it will, it's a frightening thought. Yes. And um, the fact that you or Diana um, supported and fought for uh, democracy, and uh, the, the right for people to elect the government of their choice. Uh, it has brought us to this place. We are today in an environment that is fair. The party is unable to contest. You, you yes. know that that is the yes. issue here. You know? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Northern Party cannot so, contest in an environment. That is, that is where it's at right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the shame that he felt on yeah. nomination yeah. today. But you know, I, I want to implore those who are viewing us and those who may view later, whether you are looking on a television or whether you're, you're having a, a wider reach on social media, I want to be able to say to you and even those who are looking on from the opposition, because I'm very sure they're going to either look at it now or later. Um, Joe, I want to say to the people out there, we will continue as a government led by His Excellency the President, our Vice President, all our cabinet members, we will work, as a government, we will work towards making your lives better. As much as we can give physically, mentally, emotionally to this country and to the people of this country, irrespective of your ethnicity, irrespective of your geographic location, irrespective of your religious background, irrespective of where you want to call yourself elite or not, we will work in the interest of all Guyanese, irrespective of your political affiliation. We believe in democracy. We have always uphold democracy and we will continue to do so. It is your democratic right to choose who you want to lead you, whether it be in local government or whether it be in the general elections. It is your right to do that. We will always uphold the principles of democracy. But do not let yourself be intimidated, intimidated. Do not let yourself buy into the misleading information and the deceptive narrative that the opposition, the leader of the opposition and the members of the opposition want to drive into you. Do not buy into that, I implore you. And I also implore the staff at GCOM to act professionally always. We are moving. The concept of One Guyana is real. We want to be able to achieve a united society and a united country. And we have been working every day for that. We will continue to do so. And you have to decide whether you want to be on board or not. But do not let yourself buy into something that will not get you any progress or any development because this is about you, the people. So before we go, let me say to my brothers and sisters who have made the decision to support the People's Progressive Party today. Uh, I know you will find the strength I know you will overcome. I know you will survive this because you know you did the right thing. Your conscience is clear. And the party will be there 
every step of the way to support you. You have nothing or nobody to fear. You know, I say this, and I'm testimony to that fact. The fact that Joe Hamilton is sitting here, <laughs> the fact, you will survive. <laughs> the, fact that, yes, the fact that I have survived um, what I know are the likely spears and arrows, I know you will survive it. I know you young people, women, uh, mature people, people who were uh, in the middle echelons, echelons of the PNC and today I know what they will see and uh, attempt to do to you. Yes. You will overcome this. This will pass. I can assure you, you just stay strong. You continue to give your support. Uh, you continue to be there. Any um, situation that come up, you know where to find the party leadership. And we will see you together in your villages, in your towns, when we kept campaigning. We'll be there with you, walking with you in the streets, going door to door. So the party is here uh, to support you. And specifically, I'm speaking to, as I leave, my afro Guyanese brothers and sisters. This will pass. You will overcome this. You know that the choice you have made is because you recognize it's the best choice, the best decision you would have made in your life. And so the fact that your conscience is clear, I know you will weather this storm. I know you will be able to survive all the things that will be thrown at you. Uh, you might lose some friends. Some family members might get very indifferent. All of those, that, those things, but all of that will pass. And I speak from experience. <laughs> I, I'm a living testimony, testimony to these things that I'm saying. Which I so, hope is better now. Right. <laughs> so I'm not imploring you uh, based on the fact that Hamilton just gaffing. I implore you based on experiences of passing down that road and today um, I am here I can speak to you and I can give you strength I can give you the courage that you need at this time continue wearing your red shirt continue wearing your red shirt so thank ladies and gentlemen thank you from my end I know Sonia would wrap up she started so I'm giving her the floor <laughs> to wrap up and we will go I think I've said a lot but uh, come local government elections day or e-day as we call it you are voting for you and you are voting for the best person who will be representing you and it is about you and your environment the local government elections is about you having an environment that is developed that can be developed and you will be a part of it so make the right choice but it is you know it's all down to you but at the same time do not allow yourself to be bullied or be intimidated. Do not allow yourself to be, to, to, to have that or take that. Because you're smart people and you know when you can make the right choice and have to make the right choice, whatever that choice is. But so good night everyone and thank you all for listening. <laughs>